Hi, I'm Mike Lohanian, Client Technology Specialist from Dell. Today, I'm excited to show you the new uh, Dell UltraSharp 4K USB hub display featuring the industry's first IPS Black technology. Uh, so to the side of me here, I've got the new U2723QE. Uh, it's a 27 inch, uh, like I said, it's a 4K with this new IPS Black technology. Uh, there is a big brother to this. There's the U3223QE, which has all the same features. It's just 32 inch versus uh, 27 inch. Uh, so today, what's the agenda? Um, we're gonna start off by talking about what is IPS Black technology and what is why is this special? Uh, we're gonna go over the specs of this uh, display and go through the uh, ports um, of, of the system. Then we're going to talk about an optional accessory that we have, the SB522A. Um, it's a Microsoft Team Room certified slimline conferencing soundbar that you can have added to it. I actually have it um, right here, so I'll do a demo of that and how it works. Uh, we're going to go over um, uh, hub displays. This is a hub display, like I said in the beginning, so it has the docking station built in. So we're going to cover what is that, how does it work, uh, why is it special, and the different ways you can use it. Then we're going to go into demoing KVM um, on this display because this display also has KVM, meaning I can hook up more than one PC to this monitor. So if I'm in a situation like a home office um, where I have my home PC and my work PC, I can connect them both to it and I can share the mouse and keyboard um, off this display. In addition, this display can do picture and picture and picture by picture, uh, which means if I have two PCs hooked up to them, I can have both PCs uh, on the on the display at the same time. You know, whether it be splitting the split display in half or having one of the displays up in the, the corner, which would be picture uh, in picture. So let's now dig into what is IPS Black technology. So IPS Black technology. Um, to explain it, I really almost had to explain, you know, what is it trying to fix? What is the issue um, that's out there and why did we bring that out? Um, uh, but before I do, I do want to give a big shout out uh, to Chad Brent. He's the uh, Senior Product Marketing Advisor uh, for Dell Displays, and he's been a big help anytime I've had a request to um, make one of these YouTube videos and getting me what I need for him. So, uh, Chad, thank you. Um, so IPS Black Technology, what is it trying to uh, solve? Let's take a look um, at an image here and um, take a closer look at it and see um, what type of issues a, a typical IPS display um, has. So let's take a, a better look at this uh, gentleman's face. And you can see um, over here on uh, this side, this is a conventional IPS uh, display and it looks um, pretty good, right? You're looking at uh, the image and you know it's 4K and it looks looks great. But um, things you notice like around his cheek and everything, um, it's very um, light. But if we go over to the side here with an IPS black display, you can see that it is not um, washed out, right? Everything is very very defined, um, very uh, rich contrasts and colors, and it's not white washed out um, of the image. And this is what IPS Black uh, technology is doing. It's giving you a great contrast ratio uh, or high dynamic range um, of, a, of an image. And you can see the reds are, are red or with the black and there's more definition in the fur. Um, you know, like I said, now that I've kind of showed you that you're gonna start looking at images and you're starting to notice the uh, whitewash out of a lot of the colors. So this IPS Black uh, technology does an excellent job of giving this high contrast ratio. So how is this IPS black technology working? Well, I've kind of made a, a crude, very crude uh, setup here, and this isn't exactly right, but it gives you the basis of how this is working and how it, um, uh, how traditional IPS displays uh, have a hard time uh, with this high contrast ratio. So what I've done here is I've taken a piece of uh, construction paper and I've cut two holes in them. Um, and those are, the holes are gonna represent uh, pixels um, and one uh, pixel is wanting to create a black color, the other pixel is wanting to create a um, yellow color. And I'm gonna take my flashlight here. And what happens is you put a um, light through a pixel to create that image on your display. If say, if I'm over here and I wanna create this white, uh, this yellow image, um, I'm shining it on there, but what you can see is that light is actually uh, overlapping into that pixel that is trying to create that black color. 
Um, so that is why you get that um, kind of whitewash effect, uh, especially when you have light colors right up against a uh, dark color. So what IPS Black technology does, it says, let's focus that light more precisely into that pixel. So I don't have that bleeding over into um, the other pixel. So I can have this very um, high 2000 to one contrast ratio on my display, and then I can get very vivid um, images uh, on here. It also is excellent for the uh, viewing angle. The viewing angle on this is a 178 degree uh, viewing angle. So um, awesome. Um, one of the things that, that people will ask when you talk about high contrast ratio is, you know, uh, is it HDR certified? So it is display HDR 400 um, certified in this display. Uh, if we're talking about other uh, certifications, if we do the SRGB, uh, it's 100% um, in that range. And the DCI uh, P3, the uh, Digital C Cinema Initiative, uh, it's at 98% um, on this. So this is a gorgeous, gorgeous display. Uh, and another thing to point out, um, a lot of people may not catch, is this isn't an infinity edge display. There is nearly no bezel on this display. It is very, very thin all the way around. So it is excellent if you're trying to pair it up to a second display um, that you don't have these thick bezels uh, that impede your image. So you can do it above, below, uh, left or right on, on this display because it's an infinity edge all the way around. Um, another thing to um, point out about this display is it uh, incorporates uh, Dell's uh, Comfort View Plus, um, which is a hardware-based low blue light. So you think about you're working on this uh, beautiful display all, all day, and if it wasn't a, a Comfort View Plus display, um, over time, as you look at your display, uh, your eyes are going to get tired. They're going to get dry. By the end of the day, you're starting to get blurry vision uh, from it. And that is caused by the blue lights that are uh, emitting out of uh, the display. It emits out of all, all displays, uh, including your cell phone. Um, it's the same uh, uh, light that comes from the sun, right? It's what tells us uh, to be awake um, uh, in, during the daytime. Uh, the problem with it is our eyes can't filter it. It's really close to that UV spectrum of unseeable um, light and our eyes can't handle it, so it bores through, and that's what caused that dryness, the irritation, and the blurriness, and, and over time uh, can actually damage your uh, retina. So, um, you know, there's this effort to try to uh, eliminate blue light. Um, if you eliminate it 100%, uh, then you've gotten rid of your blue colors, and it, it looks horrible. The screen is terrible, but a hardware-based low blue light says, I'm gonna take a spectrum of the blue uh, that is right next to that unsealable um, blue, and we're going to eliminate those, just those. And those are not the ones that address your colors. Um, so we're going to take out those, but keep the other blues. So the screen doesn't damage your eyes. You can work all day on it without having that irritation from um, the blue light. That is uh, what we call Dell Comfort View Plus hardware base uh, low blue light. So um, like I said, just a, an absolutely uh, stunning display. Um, let's go ahead and, and talk about um, some of the ports on here. So let's take a look at the ports on this display. And this is really one of the things that makes it special and, and different from a traditional display. Um, as I said before, you know, this is a um, hub display, so it has the docking uh, station and sense built into it. Um, so if you're hooking up a, a notebook, you don't have a, have to have a separate uh, dock. Um, because of that, um, some of the ports are different, right? You um, you look at it compared to a traditional monitor, and you you may scratch your head. It's like, well, why are so many ports on here, and what what do they do? Um, one of the first concepts when you think about a hub or a docking built in is you're going to have this um, difference between what you say is upstream and downstream uh, ports. So you'll see highlighted in here uh, some USB-C uh, downstream. Um, you'll see, you know, things like Display Port Out. You'll see um, USB uh, upstream uh, ports. In a sense, the difference between a downstream and an upstream is if it is a downstream port and you plug something in, like here I've got a USB uh, C and a USB um, A uh, 10 gigabit um, uh, port here. If I plug, say, a Bluetooth um, nub into this or a camera or a mouse and keyboard um, into that, 
these ports here are now going to be looking downstream to for a computer, right? So I have here upstream uh, ports um, that uh, go up, and they're looking for the downstream ports uh, to connect to. Um, and that's really what makes it a hub. And so um, it gets a little confusing, that difference between down and upstream. But anytime it's an upstream, it is your computer looking up. The downstream ports are looking down to find uh, the computer. And so if we get, take a, a left or right here, look at these ports, um, we've got the security lock over here. So you can, uh, the secure, um, you know, put, it's basically a notebook uh, lock on that with the cable that you wrap around to keep people from uh, stealing the display. You've got your power connection. And now you have uh, three, um, um, in a sense, video ports on here. So an HDMI, uh, a display port, and a um, USB-C uh, video data. So it's a display port um, USB-C in here. And these are the three, what you would call um, upstream ports. So these are what you're connecting your computers to. Now, the important one from a hub perspective of making this a docking station, uh, if you have your notebook and you have your USB-C um, connection or Thunderbolt connection uh, on your notebook, you would simply connect the single cable um, to your notebook. And with that, you've got your video and data. So when we talk about um, any devices that we hook into the downstream ports, they're now gonna be flowing um, through this, this cable. And I'll demo this. I, I know it sounds a, it might sound a little complicated. So uh, this is one you'd connect to your notebook. You do have an HDMI display port here. So if you wanna hook up um, you know, a uh, second computer or maybe you have a desktop computer and you don't wanna use the USB-C port, you HDMI um, or um, the full-size display port uh, that is provided here. And I'll show a couple little tricks of this, of being able to hook two PCs. Um, if we go down, um, there's also a stand lock here that you can lock the monitor to the stand. So you basically have two um, security uh, locks you can put in here. Uh, the next one is a display port out. Um, and you start scratching your head. So hold on, I got a display port in and display port out. Where does that go? Well, this um, allows you to daisy chain a second display um, to your system. So um, if you're connecting in with a single uh, port to your notebook and it's connecting to this monitor and grabbing all the ports, but you say, hey, I'm a two monitor person. I don't want just one monitor. You can actually daisy chain to a second display. So that is that display um, port out that I'd be looking for a second display uh, to daisy chain off of. Uh, secondly, you've got a, a audio line out. So it's a three and a half millimeter um, jack audio. Um, you've got a USB-C um, upstream port. So again, whatever I plug into this port here is going to be looking uh, to this port down to uh, the notebook. So if I plug that, um, let's just say a... Uh, a camera, the USB-C camera, I could plug into there and it would actually show up on the notebook connected um, through this USB-C. Then I've got um, some more uh, USB-A ports uh, here, one, two, three, four. Uh, and then I've got an RJ45, uh, which is your ethernet. And again, this is what makes it, it's a pass-through. Uh, it can be Pixie boot, uh, wake on LAN. Uh, but when I connect the ethernet to here, and I've got this USB-C um, um, uh, down, uh, you know, basically upstream port. Uh, this acts as a downstream. So when I connect my notebook through this port here, I'm actually connected to the Ethernet now uh, through that, which is which is awesome, right? Um, again, this is acting as a as a docking station. Uh, if we go over here, we've we've got some right underneath the uh, bottom of the display, a um, super speed uh, USB 10. Uh, uh, USB 3.2 Gen 2, uh, and then you have another uh, USB-C downstream port on these. So these are both um, downstream, so they will again connect to uh, the computer. So that is kind of showing the um, the ports. There's also a log of uh, ergonometry or adjustability of this display. As you can see, you can do portrait or landscape. Um, you know, if I go through and uh, you can raise and lower the, the display, uh, you can you know, swivel at the base. Uh, like I said, you can do the height adjustment um, on and even uh, the tilts, right? So if you uh, have different uh, viewing angles that you want to uh, look at, 
it'll adjust, you know, five uh, percent down uh, or five degrees down and twenty one degrees up. So that's a quick overview of the ports. Let's take a look at some of the things that you can do with this. Um, you know, one of the things I didn't mention, um, there are two um, little dots down here. Um, you can see they're kind of underneath these lines. And that is for a uh, speaker bar. Uh, so next, let me show you this um, speaker bar. That, um, and it's an a optional accessory that you can get, but it makes it very, very uh, clean uh, to add speakers and microphones to the system. Next, I want to show you a little add-on accessory you can actually buy for this uh, display. Uh, the display doesn't come with sound um, or any uh, speakers built into it, uh, but there is here the Dell SB522A. It is the slim uh, conferencing sound bar. Uh, really nice. Um, you know, it's kind of kind of small. Uh, it's full duplex. It's got AI-driven uh, noise canceling and echo canceling in it. It is Microsoft Teams certified. You know, with that um, on this side here, you've got a Microsoft Teams button that allows you to uh, answer and hang up a call. And on the other side, it, it's um, you know, it's a volume up, volume down, just kind of taking my finger and, and moving it like that to do that. And if you want to mute um, the sound, you just simply press it. Uh, but what I like about it, it's a very clean solution to add on to this monitor. Um, you'll see it's got two little um, connection points here, here and here. These are little uh, magnetic uh, clips and it's got little guides on it. And if we take a look at the bottom of the display, I'll pull this thing all the way up and again, I'll turn it sideways. And you might be able to see that, but there is a, a corresponding clips that, that go in. And what's nice is it, it, you can feel it just magnetically kind of click into place there. So it's real easy. And then it's got a USB port, which now I plug into uh, the back of the, to the ports in the back here. Plenty of USB ports like we showed. And now I've got it clipped in. And you can see, you know, no cables uh, in showing uh, for the end user. You can see the light starting to light up here. I've got my Teams buttons. The light up that tells me here I've got the, the um, system on uh, mute. And then you can do volume up and volume down on there, but a very, very clean solution that will give you the microphones that you want, allow you to answer team calls, uh, allow you to, you know, if you want to listen to some music, um, you have that um, on there as well. So a uh, nice little solution to go that complements this display. So hub monitor. Yes, the U2723 QE is a hub display. Now the hub display was a concept that we introduced, uh, gosh, it must have been late, um, 2000, right before uh, the pandemic hit. And the concept was that, um, you know, usually when you have a notebook and monitor and peripherals, you'll get a docking station. And, you know, I've got here uh, the WD-19 uh, TBS uh, dock, um, excellent uh, dock. But uh, the theory was, um, what if we took some of the capabilities of a traditional dock and we build that into a monitor? And we call that a a hub display uh, of which um, this is. Um, so you think about it. The reason I get a dock is to uh, make it easy for an end user, a single uh, cable to connect in and connect all the peripherals and monitors um, uh, that, that you have. Um, but there's some there's some drawbacks to that, right? If you think about a traditional docking situation and um, the amount of assets you have and the amount of uh, clutter that it can create, um, it's made, you know, not always the most ideal situation. Um, so if you look at, at this dock, right, and if I take a traditional setup where I have a, a notebook, a dock, and a monitor, and I start doing a, a count on that, right, as an IT professional, uh, you've got three assets you're managing now, the dock, the monitor, and the, and the uh, uh, PC. Uh, from a cable count, right? I've got a cable going into my notebook. Uh, I've got a uh, power cable going into the dock, uh, which is uh, cable number two. Uh, number three, dock to ethernet. Uh, number four, uh, dock to monitor. And number five, monitor to a power source. So three assets and five cables. Uh, but if we look at the hub concept um, built into a monitor, I've got a single uh, USB-C cable uh, that is connected into my um, uh, display. Uh, from there, I've got a power uh, cable coming out of my display to give power um, to uh, the display. 
Uh, and if I had an Ethernet, which I, I don't, I'm not close to an Ethernet port, I would have an Ethernet in that um, uh, display. Uh, so now I've got two assets rather than three that I'm managing, and I'm down from five cables uh, to three. And uh, from a clutter perspective, uh, that's wonderful, right? I've eliminated uh, an extra box and all these cables kind of kind of around and made a, a really um, nice setup. So let's talk about this, right? You know, this single cable going into the monitor, you know, what is that giving me? Um, that single cable here is delivering 90 watts of power down from the, the monitor to charge uh, my notebook here. So I'm getting power. Uh, if I was connected to Ethernet in here, it would pass through the Ethernet uh, into my, my notebook, and that is a, a pass through. It supports uh, Pixie Boot um, uh, and it passes through the IP address. So um, when I plug in this uh, notebook, it's, it's like I'm plugging directly into uh, the Ethernet. It also sends the video, so the video from um, my monitor here to here, and I can split it like I've done here rather than mirror it, um, what they call extended display, display. So I'm showing this as uh, two displays now. Um, the sound goes through here. And earlier I talked about these USB upstream ports, right? So whatever I plug into this uh, display, into the USB ports and the USB-C ports, now um, act as if they're on this uh, notebook. So uh, in this case, I've got a wireless mouse and keyboard uh, connected to the display that when I plug this in, uh, it connected to um, the, the mouse and keyboard here. You can see I'm, I'm moving it around. Um, I also have the sound bar um, that I put on there with the, the microphones and the speakers. Uh, that is all connected along with the volume up, volume down and the mute, all those buttons uh, work and connected um, on here. Right, um, so a really clean um, setup. It's less asset uh, assets to manage, um, but you know, as COVID hit, right, and we started getting through it and started looking at um, how the new hybrid workforce was um, gonna gonna come about. This is when this concept of hubs really uh, took took hold because you think about. Um, you know, not always working in the office. You know, maybe you're in a hybrid situation where you're coming in one or two days a, a week, and uh, the IT um, and the and the facilities have to figure out how do I handle that. Well, this concept of hoteling and hot desking really became, um, you know, what what everybody's striving for. So when I say hoteling and hot desking, if you go into the office, you no longer assigned a seat. You're no longer assigned a desk or an office. In the case of um, uh, hot desking, you would walk in and whatever desk is available, I take, and that's what I work for the day. Hoteling would be I reserve a room, right? I get in some kind of uh, thing and reserve it. Um, but as I, I walk into there, this concept of hub monitors is excellent, right? Um, because I put all the peripherals on here. I walk in as a worker, I take one single cable and I connect it and I'm connected um, to, to all the peripherals here. I want to leave, I unplug it and I, I go. Right. And I said, this is USB-C here. That is not a proprietary cable. That is an open standard. So, um, you know, as much as I'd like to think everybody owns a Dell, right? You may have an, an HP, you may have a Lenovo. Um, heck, if you've got this monitor at home um, and you're doing like I, I sh you know, I'm going to show on the um, uh, hooking two PCs to it, right? Um, maybe your kids have a Chromebook, right? So it doesn't matter if you're Dell, HP, Lenovo, it doesn't matter if you're Chrome, uh, even Mac users, right? It's USB-C on there. I can plug in uh, the Mac, but I'm always going to put an asterisk by a Mac because, um, you know, if, if you try to do certain things, Macs um, don't necessarily always work, uh, but in the, what I'm showing here, this um, uh, works fine. So um, it's a very open concept. So you know, as businesses looked at uh, these hub displays, they said, this is perfect, right? I'm going to put a hub display in here and now it's universal and it's easy for my end users. Uh, the other thing it addresses um, you know, that a lot of people don't think about is if I'm a hybrid worker, you know, how many times are you going to come in the office and go, ah, left my AC adapter at home? You know, that's great. I'm going to work here for a few hours and I'm going to have to go home because my battery just drained on my notebook. Or I'm going to have to go bug somebody to borrow their AC adapter. Uh, you know, with this concept, I don't have to bring my AC adapter along. I'm being charged through the monitor through the USB-C cable, which is which is wonderful. Um, or <laughs> the other situation, and I've been here many times, it's embarrassing, right? You, you come into the office, you uh, sit down your notebook, and then you get on your hands and knees crawling underneath the desk to plug in your AC adapter. 
uh, you no longer have to do that. So uh, this concept of hub um, displays really has come into its prime. Um, it's extremely popular for so many reasons. Um, but that is the hub concept and the U2723 QE is a hub display, I'm happy to say. So that's great. Um, so the next question would be, well, what if I want dual displays, Mike? I don't just want uh, this here. I'm, I want two 27 inch displays or two combination of, of displays on here. Uh, let's take a look at that. The U2723 QE is uh, does daisy chain. I can daisy chain up to a second 4K uh, display on that. So let's take a look at that. Daisy chaining, right? This is pretty exciting. Um, as you can see here, what I've done is I've got the uh, Precision um, 5550 um, notebook here. Uh, I've got it connected to the uh, U2723QE, which is right here. Um, daisy chain to that is uh, its predecessor, which is the U2720Q, uh, which is also a uh, 4K display. So you can see I've got three um, displays uh, extended. Uh, so the question is, how am I how am I doing that? So in the uh, QE here, uh, it has something called MST or multi-stream transport. Um, it's a protocol. It's a technology that's built into the monitors that allow you uh, to daisy chain from one to the other. So remember, when I uh, was looking at the the ports and I pointed out the um, uh, display port, full size display port out. Um, and all I did is take a display port cable uh, from the out port here and put it into the U2720Q. So it's just, you know, cable like this, just a little bit longer um, display port cable, and I've connected those together. And that's the way I've, I've daisy chained um, those, those systems. Now, um, I wish you were here to see the difference between these two, even though they're both 4K displays. Uh, they're absolutely beautiful. Um, the QE here uh, definitely is the uh, winner in that, that resolution. I wish you could see it live because uh, it really is a, um, a much improved uh, image. Not to give any slack to the uh, the 20Q there. It is a beautiful uh, image as well. It's just that's not as nice as this. Um, but I also want you to be careful. Um, you know, if you're watching this review of, of the QE here and thinking you're going to get a bargain buying the 20Q and get the same features, um, you're not, right? It's still a great monitor. It's a, still a, a great deal. Um, there's nothing against it, but there are differences. Even though they're both 4K, uh, the QE here is IPS black technology. Um, the, uh, the 20Q is not. Uh, this is a hub display. You have the docking built in. Uh, this is not. This is HDR 400. This is not. Uh, even the stands, right? This is the new Pro ID stand down here. Very uh, slick, thin, um, or, or uh, thin, uh, a silver finish to it. Uh, where this is the old Pro ID one stand uh, that is uh, kind of that matted uh, grayish. Uh, it is much thicker, so um, the stand is is um, much much more stylish, much more versatile uh, than the last one. Uh, so be careful; they're not they're not the same same uh, display. Um, now, uh, talking about what I did here, right, I've got two 4K displays that have daisy chain, and it is not hard to do, right? It's fairly easy to set up, and, and now I've got a uh, dual display. But there are limitations to the MST protocol, right? Um, and when I talk about doing 4K displays and pushing them, I do have some, some limitations, right? Um, you know, like right now, the way I have it set up uh, is I've got... Uh, both at 4K, uh, but because of the limitations of the of the uh, MST, I can only broadcast the second one at 30 hertz. So they're both at 4K, uh, but this has jumped down from 60 to 30 hertz. Um, if I wanted to do something like a, a lower resolution, like a QHD or a full high definition, I wouldn't have any problem. But when I push that four to 4Ks, then I'm really kind of pushing the limit to that. However, Right? If I buy a new Dell Latitude or a new Dell Preci uh, Precision with the new 12th gen Alder Lake, codeine Alder Lake um, processors, uh, within those systems, there's something called DSC or Display Stream Compression. And that technology in conjunction with MST would allow you to do uh, both 4K displays without uh, any degradation uh, to the uh, image or the refresh rate. So I could do the 
the dual at 60 hertz. So if you have a new system, um, right, we can do that. If you uh, don't, then you have some limitations when you're talking about pushing that very, very um, high-end uh, type, of, type of resolution. Uh, so uh, be careful, right, when we're looking at that. Um, now, now that you've seen this, now let's take a look at something that's really um, pretty cool. And that is hooking up two PCs uh, to the U2723QE and doing things like uh, KVM and jumping back and forth from one PC to the other and doing picture and picture and picture by picture in there. So uh, let's take a look at that. This is one of the coolest features uh, about this monitor. I talked about how it's a hub monitor, that we have the docking station built into it, um, where you know, I plug any of my peripherals into your mouse, keyboard, um, you know, webcam, you know, peripherals like that. And uh, when I connect it to uh, my notebook, you know, all those features now appear uh, as if they were on my, on my notebook. Uh, but what else you can do is um, it has built-in KVM the display and what that allows you to do is hook uh, more than one PC to it and switch back and forth from um, each PC. So one of the best scenarios would be, and a lot of us experience this, you know, we had a, a before COVID, we had an office that we went into, uh, COVID hit and we were sent to work from home. Uh, we got home and hey, we've got limited space, right? I had a setup for my home PC with, you know, um, everything there. Now I'm trying to jam my work uh, equipment into that same space. You know, I may have two two monitors, two mice, two keyboards, you know, one for my home and one for, for my office. Well, in this scenario, um, with the uh, U2723QE, uh, uh, I can actually connect two PCs and share that, that monitor, mouse, and keyboard. Uh, so what I've got set up here, I'll represent it as like a home and, and work. You know, over on... Um, this side over here, I've got the um, the Dell Precision 3560, and that would represent my my work PC. And I've got that displaying up here on on the display. And then over here, I've got a Precision uh, 5750. Uh, we'll represent that as my my personal PC. So if I, I'm working away and say, you know, hey, I want to switch over and connect to this PC and make this PC show up on the monitor, have the mouse and keyboard work. Uh, with this PC, um, you know, I can I can make that happen. Now there are two ways to do it. Uh, there is Dell Display Manager that comes with the uh, the P series monitors, the U series monitors, such as this, and the C series monitors. Um, so that it is free with the, the monitor. Um, but that application allows you to set these settings up nice and smoothly. If you don't, um, there are you can use the uh, menu bar um, down here. It's actually on the back, and I'll show that in a minute. And you can toggle these things back and forth. But definitely, Dell Display Manager makes it a heck of a lot easier, and that's what I'm going to be demonstrating it with. Um, so I've got uh, this notebook over here set up like I talked about before through the USB-C. Now the second um, uh, system, I'm going to have to do a little bit differently. Um, typically, it's a little bit easier with a desktop. If you have a desktop, you just plug in a um, you know, HDMI or DisplayPort cable into the monitor and plug a, um, it, com it comes with a USB-C uh, data only um, connection that you can pop in there. And that's what gives you the two connections for your uh, mouse and keyboard. Where all that's in this cable, you need two cables for the second um, system. In the past, I've demonstrated that with a desktop, but I had a lot of people say, I've got a notebook, not a, not a desktop as my second PC. Can I do it? Uh, and you can, and that's that's what I've done here. So I've connected actually an HDMI port, and then I put a, a USB port um, into a uh, upstream uh, USB connection in here. So that will give me the display, and this will give me the uh, connection to all the USB ports on this. And then I had to plug it in because there's no, no power uh, into it. So I've, I've had to put a few cables uh, to make this, this solution work. But you know, again, you think about it, you've got limited space at your house. I can now share this, this system. So I'll show you here real quick. What I've done is I programmed through Dell Display Manager um, a shortcut. So I've created what I was going to say Control-Alt-H. And what that does is jumps me back and forth from one PC to the other. So now you can see this PC now is on here, and you can see I'm moving the um, well, I'm grabbing the mouse here, move the the mouse around so you can see it. 
um, but I am on on this uh, PC now as well. So I've got all the mouse and control uh, for that. If I want to go back, I just do the control H again, and I'll go back uh, to the other PC. Now the mouse and keyboard are controlled um, by this this other PC. So really, really um, great to be able to share. So one fun feature uh, of this display, um, you saw me kind of jump back and forth from one PC to the other. But what if I want to split the display into two and have both PCs on the display at the same time? Uh, you'll hear the terms picture and picture or picture by picture. Uh, picture by picture uh, basically means I'm going to take this monitor, I'm going to split it in two, and one PC is going to be on one half of the display and the other PC is going to be on the other half. Uh, picture in picture uh, says one PC dominates the, the monitor and I've got a little window at the top um, where the other PC uh, resides. So, you know, maybe you're uh, working on spreadsheets and you want to you know, watch the uh, football game uh, on your home PC and just have that in a little uh, window at top. Um, but most people will, will take it and split it right down the middle, which is picture by picture. Let me let me show you that. Again, you don't have to have Dell Display Manager to do this, but it definitely makes it a lot easier. You can use the controls in the back, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, bring up Dell Display Manager, and I'm going to tell it that I want to um, put the this piece, both PCs, a picture-by-picture picture, um, arrangement. So I'm going to input, and I'm going to tell it that I am going to split it in half. And what you're going to see uh, pop up on this display now is that my home PC is going to be on one half of the PC and the uh, other half is, is my, my work PC. You can see I've got my, my mouse over here. Now, um, there's a new version of Dell Display Manager about to come out that is going to allow you just to take your cursor and move over to the other PC. Um, and when you do that, then your, your mouse and keyboard will be on the other PC. Uh, that hasn't released yet. It's about to. Um, the version I have right now, i got to tell it to uh, jump over. So what I've done is created a, a shortcut. Uh, what you're going to see here is when I do the Control S, it'll kind of pop up and you'll see a little uh, two mouse and keyboard items on there. But what I just did is just switch over uh, to my other PC now. So now I'm controlling this window. Simply do Control Alt S and I'm going to come back over um, to my home PC. Again, this will definitely be a lot easier when all you have to do is take your cursor and push it through to the other side of the PC. Really looking forward to that uh, uh, feature coming out. But that is uh, picture by picture, also picture in picture, a uh, great feature on this display. Well, I hope you enjoyed this YouTube review of the U2723QE, the world's first IPS black display. I uh, certainly enjoyed making it. Um, believe it or not, I did not cover everything about this uh, monitor. It, it truly is an outstanding uh, display with a lot of characteristics. So um, take a look at uh, the, you know, the Dell website. Um, uh, check out some other videos on it as well. There, uh, there's a lot this display can do. Uh, but if you have some questions, feel free to put them in the uh, chat here, um, and I'll try to get to them as soon as I can. Again, uh, this is Michael Ohanian, Client Technology Specialist from Dell. Thank you.